Hi, my name's Ree and I recently uh, have overcome emetophobia by working through the Thrive programme. Uh, I'm just going to do a video to talk about what I did to help me work through the book on my own, my own what I tried, um, what uh, things worked really well for me, like to help with actions. Uh, so I was successful at treating myself at home without uh, seeing, without the need to see a five consultant to help and support along the way. So in the obviously in the first couple of chapters of the book, I learnt all about how many limiting beliefs I had, and how negative they all were, how mean they were to myself. Uh, they just weren't very nice at all. And obviously then Rob teaches you in chapter two all about positive visualisation and the power of positive visualisation. And um, this was probably one of the actions that I found um, the hardest to remember to do daily. I found that if I didn't, if I forgot for a couple of days, if I was busy and I hadn't visualised positively to sort of anxious scenarios I feared, I did notice the difference, I did find I'd worry that a little bit more, I'd feel a bit more anxious about those scenarios. Uh, for example, I uh, worried about, obviously, if I caught a stomach bug, if my son caught a stomach bug and I caught it off him, etc, uh, etc. Et and I soon got into a routine of visualising every single night before bed, just 10 minutes when I was nice and relaxed before bed, when I was trying to get to sleep, I would focus every single night being like okay let's do my visualization now and I really notice a difference uh, every night I for example I would visualize that I would be sick I'd be nice and calm I wouldn't make a big deal out of it and I'd be really proud of myself uh, obviously in a bit more detail and then as the weeks went on and I was obviously visualising that every single night, I soon started having dreams where I would vomit in my dream and then I'd say, oh, that wasn't a big deal. So it was really embedded in my brain that I could, I do did have the ability to deal with the situation more calmly. It was very, very powerful. And I also found uh, I would wrap all my scenarios I wanted to visualise, uh, like obviously avoiding stomach bugs, uh, uh, well not avoiding stomach bugs, obviously getting a stomach bug. Um, my son starting nursery, I was nervous about, I was nervous about long car journeys in case my son was sick. I would write down those scenarios and bullet points onto a page. So I found it was almost like broken down slightly. Um, and also my, myself and also I know my friend Katie who overcome a metaphobia using this program she also we occasionally would uh, draw out our visualizations like a comic strip almost so we could visualize those images and that was very very helpful very helpful and then um obviously the locus of control came next that was a really big turning point for me because i could see how uh just how negative i was about everything about every situation I just didn't feel like I could cope with anything. I didn't have any coping skills. But also, obviously, from looking at the information Rob had given, I could see what type of person I wanted to be and what I could, what I wanted to strive towards and work towards. And my locus of control score was 23 out of 30, which is classes really high. And I was adamant that a good 9 or 10 of those would never change. But I followed the actions in the local control chapter worked really hard on them. I took up some new hobbies. I started, um, before I got made redundant, I specialised in fashion and sewing and I started taking up sewing again, um, processing that all internally. I would take my son to um, baby groups and I process all that internally. I just started to gently challenge my um, local control and I just started to process all these challenges very internally and then as time went on uh, with the book I carried on working through those actions putting a lot of effort into them and and my score went down to zero by the end of the book and a couple of the questions especially ones to do with self-esteem uh, the one where it says uh, if you're to be criticized 
um, it would make you anxious. I never thought in a million years I would change that. But then as I as I carried on working hard every single day, uh, I soon realised that when someone was criticising me, I just stood there and I just thought, you know what, your opinion really doesn't matter to me anymore. If, if I was confident in myself and what I'd done and I believed in what I'd done, someone criticising me just didn't matter anymore because now I see it as it's only a criticism if I choose to take it as a criticism. Like, they're the ones with a problem, it's their issue, they're the ones who are bringing something up, it's how I choose to take it. And I never, ever thought I would ever change that. Um, I'm immensely proud of it, but the hard work will pay off if you keep at it. Then, um, yeah, I, I never rushed any chapter. I would take my time on it. The big chapters I would sometimes do over two or three nights when my son was in bed. I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to fully understand it. I would make notes all over the pages, underline all the bits that I found really um, were really important, the bits that really st stood out to me in my metaphobia. Uh, it was just covered in notes. I also made notes in my notebook. I wanted to know it inside out. When I finished a chapter, I didn't just think, oh, right, let's jump straight to the next chapter now. Let's get into the next one. I'm really excited. I'd spend three or four days working on the actions to, to really thoroughly uh, understand them and, and make sure I was doing them properly and they were working and I was, do and, and I was um, handling, ma managing my thoughts in the correct way for the appropriate actions. And... Um, I feel that was really vital, uh, a really important part of how I overcame the emetophobia. Um, obviously next came self-esteem and the chapter is just incredible. If you work hard on the positives and you process them every single day, you'll just soon notice an incredible difference in yourself. It, Rob is very, very clever with the book and he really knows what he's talking about. I personally found um, just putting sort of some bullet points of my positives on my phone wasn't as useful for me because I found when I was processing them, because I've got a little boy running around, I'd be processing them in my head from obviously like a short bullet point and I'd get distracted or my mind would wander, obviously my son would run around or walk into a door or something and I'd, I'd get distracted. So I found that if... Um, well, I found I decided to buy a notebook and I called it my positives book and a couple of times a day I would sit and write my positives down in this book and I would probably write like an A5 page on each positive so I processed it so thoroughly this really really helped me and I'm sure this is a, a really important part of how my self-esteem went from 25% to 85% in just sort of eight weeks nine weeks and Every time I processed it, I would write down what my positive was, I'd write, write down how proud I was of it, um, what I'd done to achieve this positive, uh, what action I'd taken on, and the difference um, from how I would have, how I would have, say, experienced the situation, or how I never would have done that positive before. So, uh, next one. So, um, social anxiety was a big one for me, that area of the book. Um, I really challenged my thoughts on the social anxiety. If I ever felt a insecure thought or a anxious thought about what someone would think would think of me, um, or sort of wouldn't make eye contact with someone because I was worried about my looks or anything to do with that sort of thing, I would. When obviously the moment had passed and I sort of got home, I would sit down. I'd write down exactly what had happened, why I felt that way, what was really the worst thing that they could think what was the worst thing that could come from it um, and I'll just look at it with a bit more perspective like um, how really they probably wouldn't even care I'm just causing these feelings in my head I would write it all down and then I'd um, I'd write sort of uh, how I'd want to deal with a situation next time so and I would and I would challenge that next time so next time I came across a situation I might make I would make eye contact with um, my husband's work colleague for example and not feel insecure about myself I would challenge that and then when I did challenge those feelings I would make sure I'd remind myself um, what I, I had wrote down in the book but this technique of writing down like that I would also uh, use that for any sort of anxious thoughts any thoughts to do with emetophobia if I suddenly worried about being sick if I felt sick 
um, if I worried about my son getting ill, I would write down exactly what I was worried about, what the worst case scenario was, how I wanted to deal with it next time, um, and um, I would try and bring a bit of humour into it, just to sort of make me see a little bit more perspective on it. Uh, for example, when I was anxious about, say, hearing my husband be sick, I'd remind myself that it is just a sound. It's not like this sound is going to sort of break open the bathroom door and come and hover over me and attack me in my sleep. It is just a sound. And I found just putting a bit of humour into it just made me just see the bigger picture that bit more. And it just made it that bit uh, easier to to turn that thought internal and to challenge it and, and overcome it. So um, the unhelpful thinking styles in the book was a, a big eye-opener and once I'd read it I was really eager to start the actions and change um, change how I was and uh, become this different person who wasn't so negative and obsessive and paranoid the list goes on <laughs> and um, I gently challenged my avoidance behaviours and uh, using my new skills that I'd learnt I took my time with it. I didn't push myself until I was ready. Uh, a big one for me was like, opening doors in public. I just didn't want to be opening doors. I always used my sleeve, um, but I just challenged it very gently. And I just told myself that I could tolerate these experiences. I could tolerate the feelings and it wasn't going to be the end of the world. I'd remind myself if I was walking up to a door and I suddenly worried about it, I would be like, no, you can do this. And I reminded myself I was just thinking black and white thinking, nothing is going to happen. I was catastrophizing the situation. And even if something did come of it, I was learning to have this, the coping skills to deal with it. I, um, I could tolerate my discomfort that came from it. And over time, I managed to challenge all of my avoidance behaviours. And um, I, I no longer use any of them and I don't feel nervous because of it. I just did one at a time and uh, and did it at my own pace. I didn't rush it. I didn't want to rush it. And that worked really, really well for me. And so I um, obviously as well, another major part of the book was learning to manage your thinking and your language. I learned to not catastrophize things and not exaggerate things. I, I without even knowing, I would uh, exaggerate just normal situations without even realizing I exaggerated in the way I spoke about it. So once I started noticing that and noticing I wasn't exaggerating, say, oh, I'm starving, or I'd use the word ridiculous a lot. Once I stopped to um, noticed and and put a stop to exaggerating just normal situations. I noticed I wasn't exaggerating emetophobic situations in my head. I was obviously turning them into this big, out of, over, out of proportion, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, I was just turning into this big, huge situation it didn't need to be, but I was, I was doing that in my head. I was catastrophizing it. And uh, I, I really, really, really focused on not using any of those, that language and not exaggerating just everyday scenarios and that really had a massive knock-on effect to emetophobic situations and, and anxious situations and uh, obviously just generally just learn i just learned to take a step back from things and just look at things with perspective like i said before i just tried to put a bit of human things when i looked at them with perspective you know if i saw vomit on the floor it's not going to grow legs and run after me down the street sort of thing um, and it's just nice to think of it like that in a way because um, it's always been such a serious thing and then to overcome it and look at it in, in, a, in a new light like that is uh, it's quite powerful really and um, I mean all of this that I've talked about now so I've come to the end um, everything I talked about I had to work at daily uh, I put so much effort into it persistent effort every single day and at times I thought, oh gosh, I'll just have a couple of days off. I mean, I've got a lot going on. But then I did notice a slight um, fallback. I had to keep the ball rolling. I had to keep going at it. And um, uh, as time got on, all the actions just got easier. They became, they, st they, start, they started just to become 
habitual um, rather than me having to sort of stop and, and be like no you need to do this you shouldn't think of it like that way I, I was just thinking the right way anyway and um, yeah another thing that I did was I put positive statements everywhere around the house uh, obviously Rob suggests to do it towards the end of the book anyway but I didn't just put statements um, out that were to do with the book for example my anxiety is coming from inside of me I'm creating this anxiety I can stop it um, is this thought in my mind helpful if not you should change it or bin it I obviously I had those around the house but I also just had general uplifting um, powerful statements as well I, I went on Pinterest and just printed, printed loads off um, just ones that just reminded me how far I'd come and I found those really powerful as well they're everywhere around the house they're on the kitchen cupboards they're on the fridge I've got one just just here um, when I walk up the stairs when I do the dishes there's a big one stuck on the window in front of where I stand where I do the dishes um, everywhere I go around the house there's these statements and um, obviously my husband sees them as well so if he ever noticed me sort of saying something negative or worrying about something he'd remind me of the statement next to him on the wall and um, that is a real real big part it just uplifts you and it just reminds you how well you're doing and then obviously just to sort of finish off I mean I I took nine but nine weeks to do the book uh, obviously I know it can be done in sort of six to seven weeks but for me I needed that little bit more time just to make sure that I understood it and with my my little boy as well I had to juggle obviously looking after him and being mum and sort of uh, spending time with my husband and I didn't want to sort of just have the book uh, I didn't want to just be sat reading the book on the sofa whilst my son has to sit and and occupy himself obviously I had I had limited time when I could do it but for me it worked really well taking that little bit longer to make sure I thoroughly understood it and uh, once I'd finished it I also read for it a second time uh, which I found very very helpful because I noticed all, actually there were a few things that I had been missing once I completed a book I thought oh but I still feel a little bit unsure of this I'm still a little bit here anxious here and like when I re for example when I reread through the book I realized that um, I was still struggling a little bit with my uh, desire for control so I put uh, that bit more effort into it for a few weeks just to sort of work on those bits that I'd fallen slightly behind on and I, I, to be honest I think I'll probably read the book again even though I'd now class myself as cured of the emetophobia obviously I'm still working hard on the actions I, I don't want to slip back into old habits I want to make sure I maintain them and I it, not only because obviously I don't want to slip back but also just because it's a, just a better way of living it's a more positive way of living and it's just a nicer example to set to people and to my children it's just a much nicer example and I, I know it will have an impact on the person he will grow up to be because I will influence him in so many better ways so I hope that was helpful obviously this is just sort of what worked for me but I know um, at times in the book when I might have struggled in sections it would have been really helpful to see a video from someone else who had worked through it and was successful and because it just might be one or two things that you think oh yeah I'll give that a go that might that might work for me so uh, yeah and thank you and goodbye.